course, a lot of news last night following the uh, Rashad Penny surgery update. We'll revisit that in just a moment. Russell Wilson, I believe, was the third to last quarterback taken last night. Matt Hasselbeck, who, of course, Previously was a Seahawks. Seahawks hat around. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. of course, was at one point. I guess I guess he's a predecessor, not the predecessor, but a predecessor to Russell Wilson. Took him with what was the third to last pick last night. I was surprised he lasted that long, Mike Clay. I think, though, there are people who are probably saying, okay, we don't know about Doug Baldwin right now. We'll talk about him in a minute. Rashad Penny just got injured. The offensive line's no good. And it's not like wide receiver depth was a calling card for this team. Are you nervous at all about Russell Wilson? I am a little bit. I'm I'm definitely worried about volume. You, you look at last season, believe it or not, that was the only season of his career in which he was top 15 in passing attempts. They were they called the pass heaviest offense in the NFL. They plan on going back to the run. Pete Carroll has said that they've made that clear with personnel moves throughout the offseason, including the new offensive coordinator, Brian Schottenheimer, who has a very run heavy background. Uh, and I have concerns about uh, Wilson's supporting cast as well. You kind of just touched on it. The offensive line, the weapons around him. Uh, the saving grace actually might be the fact that the defense, especially if Earl Thomas doesn't play, is not good. They have major, major roster concerns. He may end up having to bail this team out in garbage time in the second half, and, and maybe that is how he survives. But keep in mind, yes, he's finished third or better in fantasy points at quarterback three times. He's finished eighth or lower three times as well. A lot of them came earlier in his career when they were very run heavy. But again, they may be run heavy again. At least they're going to try to be. So this is it's a tough call, but I think you have to move the needle down from where he was last season. I think he's more of a mid-pack QB1, not an elite option. All right, I've got him at quarterback three, and I just I, I actually feel like I'm potentially going to be swayed here in just a moment. Um, but let's take a question uh, specific to Russell Wilson that I can tie into my own analysis. What do you got here, Keith? Actually, I think we're going to skip this question field. Why don't we keep on All right. this? Okay. I misheard in my own ear. Here we go. But um, one thing I'll say about this, Mike, is you just mentioned how they're going to be run heavy, run heavier. Uh, this this season on paper. So one thing I wonder is you said the defense is no longer great, which means that does that lead, is there a greater propensity to have games where they have to score 25 or 28 points to win mm-hmm. because they're not going to be, you know, sort of eking out 12-9 contests over Arizona or L.A., which has happened in that division in previous years. And the other thing I notice is just looking at his rushing attempts, it's been pretty stable for Russell Wilson year over year. Mm-hmm. A high of 118 back in 2014, but... Year by year, 94, 96, 118, 103, 72, 95. So every single season, Russell Wil- Russell Wilson has given you, you know, six-ish attempts per game, which w- helps raise the floor. And that's why I think he's still a fringe top five quarterback. I mean, there are a lot of quality quarterback options. Still think he's right there because he is very good. There's potentially a lot of garbage time. He adds value with his legs. There is a lot to like about him, but there are some, I mean, it could be a mess. The Seahawks could go three and 13 this year. I would not be surprised. I, I, you have to look at their roster. I mean, it's unbelievable how much talent they lost this offseason. Just to remember, the NFL is the not for long league in mm-hmm. a lot of ways, right? Just for teams as well. Player attrition yeah. and team, uh, the cycle of teams. Um, I'm, I'm a little bummed we didn't have our friend Mita Kimes on the podcast today. Just, just to, <laughs> she's on Get Up, I think. Yeah, Sorry she this morning. is. I know. You know she... She's she's gonna be struggling. It's with gonna her be team. Similar, It's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be hard. I mean, the, like in her watching Richard Sherman play for another team in the same division. I'm that's lending this. Sting. I'm lending this for Mina. She <laughs> should call her fantasy team emotional turbulence this year because it might be emblematic of her Sundays watching the Seahawks. We get back to the news about the running backs, and we covered it at the beginning of the show, but it is the biggest story of the day, I would say, in terms of fantasy impact. And that's that Rashad Penny Stefania is now dealing with a finger issue. Right. And and I went through it in more detail before, so um, I, I won't revisit it here other than that he had surgery on. Yes. <laughs> it's time for the, you know, you know, the drop. Ah, oh, my, my finger. finger. Yep. All right. Uh, because, look, we've had we had not one but two finger injuries we already discussed. The point is he had surgery. And even though uh, the Seahawks may be optimistic about week one, there's nothing guaranteed. By the way. Pete Carroll is supposed to address the media related to this injury later today. In the past, I would say, um, if if the past teaches us anything, he's tended to be very optimistic about when players will return. So just keep that in mind. All right. So wait, are you saying I can't trust what Pete Carroll says in a press conference? (laughs) Those are your words, not mine, my friend. I cannot believe that. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) ESPN Radio, breaking news. 
Daniel, you just wanted to get involved in the podcast. Like, no, I didn't. I wanted, that's that's incredible news. That is not what I know of Pete Carroll in the slightest. Daniel's a backseat driver in the podcast. Totally. Today. You know, like, are we there yet? Are we there? Have you <laughs> taken a left? Have you entered the address into Waze Kyle, yet? Kyle, figure no. out how to cut the mic. This is I yours. Don't, <laughs> I don't think Daniel could t- knows that we could see his screen, his computer screen. He's actually Googling how to be a researcher. Like, I just saw him searching that. <laughs> wow. He's when did Mike Clay get funny, guys? <laughs> when did that happen? Pretty good. That's, that was, that pretty, was good, pretty good, Michael. That was pretty good. So let's do two things here, Mike. Earlier in the show, we covered just the, the running back situation going forward for this season. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit of Dynasty, because you are our Dynasty guy here at ESPN. Rashad Penny. Off memory, which is a Kenny Main catchphrase. <laughs> seventh in your rookie running back dynasty ranks? Penny? Yeah. No, he's second overall. Oh. I, yeah. Opposite. So cool. the difference exact is opposite. when Kenny says off memory, he correctly <laughs> recites a really unique obscure <laughs> stat. When I say off memory, I just bungle it. Uh, yeah, I, lo- I love him. I've had him ahead of Geis pretty much the entire time. I, I just He goes in the first round. There's obviously pedigree there. That correlates with success in the NFL. And I've talked about him as this year's Kareem Hunt many times. The similarities are o- unbelievable in terms of size, in terms of uh, actually Penny's a little faster, ran a four four six, which is incredible at 220 pounds, can catch the ball. He's crazy elusive, performs after contact. I mean, he checks every box I could think of. He led the nation in rushing last year. I don't know how you don't love this guy. That's why I think within a few weeks of the season, when he comes back and he's healthy, he's going to make his impact in a hurry, and he's going to force his way onto the field. Now, our friend Will Brinson uh, wisely pointed out all of the rookie running back injuries already mm-hmm. uh, that have that have been sustained this season. We've got Saquon, who, again, he is, as Will says, he's fine, but still, hamstring issue for him. Darius Geis, Sony Michelle, knee procedure, Rashad, Rashad Penny. I feel like I say it every year, and people sort of half listen and kind of dismiss it, and I... Running back, the most vulnerable position, without a doubt. Not only in the short term, but in the long term in terms of longevity of their career. And rookie running backs, we constantly see them injured in the preseason. Rookie receivers to a degree as well. And I've talked about it before. A lot of it has to do with the way they train for the combine. Uh, They're not really playing football typically for a longer period of time because the college season ends and they have all this gap until they start doing real football things. And when they get into training camp and they're doing consecutive practices, playing at a higher level, these injuries seem to pop up. Um, so it is It is a trend, and I think it's just worth remembering that when you get really excited about the ranks, they're going to shift because of the injuries. All right, a lot of, speaking of injuries, Doug Baldwin, the Seahawks wide receiver, has not yet or is not taking place in practice at the moment, Stefania. Do we expect him back for week one? And this is what the Seahawks are saying, and I think we can't know for sure until we actually see him back doing things. So I think it's going to come down to the wire, and you're going to be forced to draft him uh, based on hoping – that he'll be back closer to the start of the season than not. All right, so you're hopeful, Mike, but can you draft him commensurate with where he was previously ranked? No, I'm I'm not taking him there. I I think that second third round turn is is too early for me right now. Even uh, did you, where did you, if you happen to recall, how did you move him down, or how far did you move him down after the injury? I was already not getting him because I had him like 13 or 14 right in that range. Him down closer to 18 right now. Okay. Uh, so either way, I was not getting him in drafts. I mean, yes, he's had a lot of touchdowns the past three seasons, 29, and only Antonio Brown has more, but he's never had more than 10 end zone targets in a season. He was kind of uh, freaky for a few years there. His efficiency in the touchdown department was off the charts, and you can't. we just don't see a guy sustain that. Even Gronk came back to earth last year. His touchdown total was about his expected total as well. So it's hard for me to expect him to score a ton of touchdowns. He's never eclipsed a 24% target share. If they do scale back the passing game, it's. I think it's going to be hard for him to to live up to a wide receiver 180p. Yeah, a little daunting, and last night it was reflected as well in terms of where he was drafted. Again, a player that... Uh, the fans that have already voted have dropped. His wide receiver ADP is 18, which is higher than our consensus ranks, which are currently 12 for Doug Baldwin. All right, there's there are other players on this roster at wide receiver. I promise you, there really are. <laughs> you may not be able to recall them off the top of your head because it's a very new cast in Seattle, or at least players that have not yet stabilized a role in fantasy football. The familiar name is Brandon Marshall, but still, people will... It was a one-year deal late, late, late in free agency. This is a player that some thought might be done after last season, Mike. Is Brandon Marshall the other Seahawks pass catcher you are interested in, or is there somebody else, or is there nobody else? 
I, I think Marshall could sneak into maybe six or seven touchdowns if they do get forced to throw plenty and he's on the field a lot. So that's a possibility. But the guy I would pick next is Tyler Lockett. I mean, his efficiency throughout his career has been very good. The touchdowns haven't been there since his rookie season. Actually, only three scores the last two years. But 60%, 68% career. I, I'm going to try this one again. Easy 60, enough for us to say, right? <laughs> 68% career catch rate and 9.0 yards per target. That efficiency is outstanding. He's never had a top 40 fantasy campaign, but he's never really had this opportunity as a clear every down player. Paul Richardson, of course, gone. I think this could be potentially a breakout season for Tyler Lockett. So take the late round stab there. Uh, I'll just say this is just sort of philosophically looking at these two different wide receivers. Jerome Brown also in the mix in Seattle. And I'm just giving you the names that are actually mm-hmm. there is this is a pretty classic case of you've got a young wide receiver with an elite trait in terms of his speed and some very good make you miss ability. Then you've got a veteran who might be on his final team in Brandon Marshall, who would even know if it's gonna make the roster, by the way, mm-hmm. when you're going into your draft, I can live with the idea of in the last couple of rounds, choosing between Brandon Marshall and Tyler Lockett, taking Tyler Lockett and having him bust this year or not be fantasy relevant more so than I can the idea of taking Brandon Marshall and having him be a non-factor because I just don't, I think the likelihood of one of them being a weekly starter is clearly more in Lockett's favor than it is in Brandon Marshall's mm-hmm. favor. No this doubt. is sort of the vintage upside versus low-ish floor between a veteran and a younger player. Seattle is a very, very interesting team to watch this year. I feel like in maybe. previous years, we maybe have even brought up their defense or special teams in terms of fantasy <laughs> drafting. How far down? I mean, just just while I have them in here, Mike, do you have it, happen to know how far down they are in your ranks? Uh, I think I ended up putting them like 20th just to be nice. I yeah. mean, I, they just, I'm telling you, this is not even close to that same defense. You're really just, if you draft them and you, or you think that D is going to be good, you're just kind of saying, well, they've been good for a long time. I'm just going to assume they know what they're doing and they're going to make the most out of their personnel. Personnel-wise, they're one of the worst on paper in the NFL defensively, and especially if Earl Thomas is out. Yeah. Maybe right. he could keep them together if he plays, but it doesn't look good right now. Currently ranked 12th on ESPN.